Welcome to this uh, Facebook Live. I am waiting for my partner in crime, Chris Bauer, to come in. Apparently, he's having some uh, technical challenges. I'm Ravi Tangri. Hi, thank you for joining me. Uh, while we're waiting for Chris up front, I want to mention one thing here. This, this resource that we're going to be uh, sharing with you is uh, about um, is about uh, how do you step out of the stress to find serenity? I just want to qualify something here. Where I am here in Nova Scotia, um, it uh, we had quite a tragic incident on the weekend. There was a, a shooting where twenty three people were killed. I just want to clarify one thing: if you are suffering from grief, if you're related to any of the people who were killed, if you are really dealing heavily with that, that's not what this is about. Chris and I have been working on this for some time. Uh, and uh, it, it just, this was a, what we had planned for the launch date for this program. This program is for uh, the, what I hope are the majority of people who are you know, not necessarily dealing with depression, not necessarily dealing with a great deal of grief and, and trauma, but, um, but just feeling the anxiety out there after weeks of being in lockdown, it's hard to find serenity. And I'm just sending a, a, a note to, to, to Chris, he's uh, he seems to be having some difficulty. So the thing is, as I was saying, if you are working through some mental health challenges, whether it's depression or or, or severe anxiety, or in this region working with um, through the trauma of what has recently happened, you need the the resource for you is to be able to reach out to family, to friends to um, to uh, a counselor to be able to help you with that. And there are resources there. Those of you who are on my personal page, you can find that. Hello, Martin, good to see you. And Connie, good to see you as well. Uh, I am uh, still working to, to get Chris aboard here. Unfortunately, I think he, uh, I, the, ah, hang on. I see something. Houston, we have contact. Chris. Ah. <laughs> Welcome. Well, thank you. I, I can be glad to be in. I had to go around to several side doors to, to find my way into the room. So good to, good to be here. A little late, but uh, better than, than not getting in. Yeah. Good to have you aboard, Chris. I was just, uh, while I was waiting for you, I was telling people that you know, the, to be clear about who this is about, maybe you want to dive into this a bit as well. If, if you know, someone is is dealing with significant depression or, or severe anxiety or here in Nova Scotia with the trauma that we just had, that's not what this is about. The, right. The, yeah. This is not going to be for people with, uh, as you suggest, you know, severe anxiety uh, issues. Now, that's not to say that there might not be benefit for folks with severe anxiety, depression, uh, or anxiety or depression, but this is not a clinical program. This is really designed to be, uh, the way I'm thinking of it is, is kind of a starter set of stress mm -hmm. management tools and techniques, uh, ideal possibly for people that don't have the background uh, using those tools. But I think even folks that have a an existing practice in any kind of um mindfulness or, or stress management techniques will still find some helpful tools and tips and, and reminders in this program. Right. And perhaps what what will get uh, is some of the, our viewers to type into the comments. We can bring some of the comments in to this. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you have been dealing with, with the anxiety? And it may not even be yours. If you're very empathic, uh, you can feel it out there, right? The yeah, everyone absolutely. else's. Uh, so type into the comments what you're you're dealing with, and maybe we'll start off 
Chris, is if we can give a little bit of a background. And, and by the way, we've got uh, in the comments so far, we've got uh, Martin is here from Austria and oh, Connie Martin. from Manitoba. So we're covering a good chunk of the globe already. Absolutely wonderful. So let me know, let us know as well where you're in from, folks. So, Chris, tell uh, people what you're bringing into this mix here. Well, you know, my background actually is in clinical psychology. Most people for the last couple of decades know me as someone who uh, primarily uh, speaks on ethics in the workplace. And I do uh, some coaching for businesses, for business people that are feeling uh, stuck in one way or another, helping them get unstuck. But actually, if you go back to the, the dark ages of, of, of my formal education and early career, uh, I was trained in clinical psychology with a lot of training and experience in cognitive behavioral therapy. And because of that, I did a great deal of work with uh, folks that had significant anxiety disorders, for example. And when I first began speaking professionally, it was actually about stress management and life balance. And even though I moved on to other things, uh, my background, uh, again, sort of my, my roots, I, I guess I should say, go back to the kinds of things that we're covering uh, in this program. So it's a it's a topic that not only do I have formal training in back in the dark ages, but something I've kept abreast of uh, ever since. All right. And hi, Gidget. We've got someone actually from my hometown from way back when. So uh -huh. good to uh -huh. see you. Uh, okay. For my, myself, I done I, I bring a couple of interesting perspectives in I, I've done a lot of work in business um, in organizational change but one of the impacts of change is stress yeah. and so back in the 90s we actually researched and created a program to um, target the one predictor of stress or not uh, which is personal power and we were actually able to show that not just after the program, people, you know, after program, people feel wonderful. Woo! It was great. Uh, but for six months, for a year afterwards, there were measurable shifts in uh, uh, reductions in stress, in life satisfaction, in job satisfaction, and huge increase in productivity um, in that. So that's one perspective. Also, for me, a big part of my journey and what I work with in a lot of my coaching work is from the spiritual side, whereas you bring the psych psychology, I bring the spiritual side and that mm -hmm. journey and that exploration. So, um, you know, it's it's a really neat mix that we're bringing. And as I was saying earlier, the the what this is really for, what we've created a resource for, and by the way, it's free, what we're talking about. So we're going to tell you 100%. all about it. 100% free, it is a resource for you, for your friends, for anyone, is for what I believe are the majority. Uh, hello, Nancy, glad you made it. <laughs> Appreciate it. Ah, so, so we each have uh, a person on from our respective hometowns. Awesome. And, um, and we should mention Chris is in Nashville. I'm in Halifax, Nova Scotia. And this, I believe, is for the vast majority of people who, you know, we may be, we've been in lockdown. It's in a lot of the world, the restrictions are, you know, basically you stay at home except for walks in the neighborhood and, uh, you know, essential shopping once a week or so. Uh, and Unless that you're can. In Georgia, we're apparently getting a tattoo as an essential service. Yes, uh, we'll not go there. <laughs> uh, good Lord. Um, <laughs> you totally threw, but for the majority of us, it's, you know, we may be doing this might've found ways to, but there's, there's a lot of, it's uncertainty that can be a lot of pressure. It's the not knowing when things are going to change, when things are going to be back to any sense of normal, because even when the lockdown's done, we will still have to socially distance because the virus will still be there. And um, hi, Margaret. And uh, we are, uh, you know, so those of us who are feeling that pressure, we wanted, Chris and I wanted to provide a resource to let you breathe and to actually be able to find a way back to some sense of serenity. Uh, which can be hard when all of this is out there all the time. Right. And, and the, the tools and techniques that we've put together for this program, you know, our, our hope is they're going to be helpful and effective, even in, in 
calmer times. But uh, right now, for all the reasons that Ravi mentioned, you know, but people that weren't anxious before are anxious now. People that were anxious before are, are more anxious now, and, and understandably so. But again, the, the kinds of tools and techniques we're talking about uh, really are, are evergreen kind of, kind of tools. So while we think they are perhaps uh, right now needed more than ever for, for more people than ever, uh, these are tools that we hope will keep you in good stead well beyond the time that this crisis finally abates. Yeah. And the other thing is we know that if can feel that there's a lot of pressure for some people, there's a lot that you're doing. You may have your kids at home. You may be doing work, all of this for others. You you may not have. And yet the, the, the common, a common thread for a lot of people is you can feel very tired, even if you're not doing a lot that day, just because of everything there. So one of the things that we've done is, make sure each of these uh, these pieces that we give you just takes minutes a day. This is not about taking an hour or a half an hour or whatever, literally minutes. And it's 21 days with a few minutes a day to build the habits to help you find that space to breathe. And I, you know, I was looking through the modules and I, I think the longest one in the entire 21 days is just a little shy of 10 minutes uh, and, and most are roughly half that now you know truth in advertising like with almost anything the more time you take to practice these ideas and techniques the more payoff there's likely to be but one of the things that Ravi and I wanted to be particularly mindful of right from the start is that as he mentioned you know so, so many of us have multiple obligations. Uh, a lot of us have days that are actually more crowded now than before we're, we're, we were restricted uh, because we're trying to work at home and, and deal with family at the same time, as well as trying to stay in touch and, and be mindful of and be helpful with uh, friends and family members who we can't be physically present with like we could even just a month uh, ago. Um, and so that can be both time consuming and certainly emotionally consuming. So. We've tried to be very careful to just stick with the kinds of things that you can at least begin to have some payoff from, some some solid reward, as Ravi says, in just minutes a day. Now, yeah. a lot of the things we talk about uh, are areas where you can go into untold amounts of depth. There, there are a few modules where we talk very quickly about things for which there are, you know, literally hundreds of courses of, of multiple hours each. So. Uh, we're not trying to dumb this stuff down, but we did want to take the essence of them, simplify it, make it ideas and tools. Again, and I know I'm repeating myself, repeating Ravi here, but things that you could really get some solid reward from truly in just minutes a day, if it turns out that that's all you have at this point. Right. And actually, Chris, we've got, uh, you liked this, a comment from Margaret. She's got the elastic on her wrist, oh, which is one of the long. techniques right. that Chris has given for, we, Margaret popped in, she helped us uh, uh, test out a couple of things uh, a couple of days earlier. So this is from day two, one of the techniques that Good. Chris I has. I hope you're finding it helpful and, and uh, your wrist is not, uh, not, not feeling banged up at this point. <laughs> and Margaret, if you can, just share how you found the, the program in terms of accessibility and ease. I would love to hear that. Um, the, the, the thing is, as Chris said, it's, it's making the time just those few minutes. Sometimes when we have inertia, it's hard to even do that. So it's really important to find just those few minutes. Like in the first day, um, I mean, for most of you, how do you know uh, that head talk, that self-talk you have. For most people, it's it feels like it's gone on forever. Some people think that's who they are. It's not, spoiler alert. Uh, the, the, the thing is that it's, um, these are, you can actually silence that. And that's one of the things that I'm gonna be showing you on day one. All it takes is a second, and then you need to practice that. Just set an alarm to practice that. Take seconds take, and spend a minute or two in that beautiful space um, three, four times a day to yeah, build I, I the habit. A, a little bit of a left turn here and, and, and talk about something that I think is uh, possibly important for, for anyone going into this program at this particular time where we are in the world. You know, one of the things that 
uh, we, we read online and hear over and over and over again is about the importance of having your thoughts, having your feelings, you know, go, going with your feelings. And uh, I, I, on one hand, absolutely, uh, that, that is correct now more than ever. But it's also important to remember that for at least most people, it is significantly easier to do that when you know that you have an available community. If you're if you're really going to allow yourself to to feel your feelings when they're uncomfortable, it just feels safer when you know that there are people you can talk to about them, people with whom you can share your emotions. And right now, for many of us, that's tough simply because of the isolation and social distancing. Many of us are cut off from friends or family, so we're certainly cut off from them face to face, uh, or, or at least uh, close, you know, hugs are, are hard to come by these days, but sometimes even being in communication with the communities that we've had at, at work or, or in our neighborhood are difficult right now. So among the things that Revy and I want to do in the, basically at the same time as we're giving you these ideas and tools is to try and build a community of those of you that are taking this course. So. Those of you that have similar experiences, uh, both outside this course, but especially within this course, are going to be able to share those with each other, help each other out, be there for support, um, which would be helpful even if you don't buy into this idea of the importance of, of feeling your feelings. But I know Ravi and I are, are both advocates of that. It's going to be that much easier if you let yourself become a part of, um, of this community, I believe. And, and, uh, as, and again, uh, some of you, uh, have access to plenty of community outside this program. That's great. It's wonderful. That's beneficial for you. It's beneficial for the folks with whom you're connected. But we also hope that you will uh, become involved in the community of folks that are involved in this course as well. Right. And I've put up the website that you go to to sign up. Again, it's free. Uh, and I'm just going to add Margaret to start. She's on day two saying, I love the videos and tools. They're simple and doable. She's committing herself to the 21 days going forward. Thank you. I need this in my life. Wonderful. That is, and maybe we can just show people a little bit of uh, where, what they, they will be getting. I'll just share the, uh, the screen uh, and uh, just to, to sort of take you through a little bit. So this is the, the home the starting there's a few sections in the introduction just letting you know what's coming up and a little bit about us and then each day these will appear day by day because we don't want to overload you i know we're used to binge watching netflix but you know invest a few <laughs> minutes here that you know each of these are tiny but just focus on that one thing you want to build that habit and some of them you can practice over a few days so for yes, example you can practice for a lifetime absolutely so, for example, day two, which um, uh, Margaret was speaking about, there's a video at the top, there's a little description, and then there there are uh, each of the exercises. There's there's are also as well as being in the video, you've got a you've got a PDF that you can download for yourself. If we go to, for example, in on day five, we'll introduce get an introduction to meditation. So there's a video that you'll start. For, and for each meditation, what we're going to have is you'll be able to get the meditation uh, with uh, just the meditation, the meditation with some background music, and then the background music by itself, if you want to use that just to meditate on your own. And I have to give kudos here. The background music is all created by the amazing uh, Christopher Bauer, who is an artist extraordinaire. So, and, and, you know, these are the resources that we're going to be, we want you to be able to build on as you, um, as you move forward. And one of the things that I want to mention, and, and we do talk about this in the videotape introduction, so this is uh, something you'll, you'll, you'll hear again. But, you know, uh, this is a, a toolkit kind of approach, right? Uh, and like any toolkit, there are going to be things that are useful for some people, not so useful for others. There are going to be things that work wonderfully for you. There are going to be things you try, and after a couple of days or a couple of weeks, you're going to shrug your shoulders and roll your eyes and say, good Lord, why have I been spending time on this? This, this does nothing for me at all. 
but uh, we, we hope you're going to try everything in here. Give it an honest shot because there may be things that sound like they're not really your style. They're not maybe something you feel you'd be good at. Uh, it's something maybe you tried in the past and, and, and didn't find a lot of success with. We want you to use at least this 21 days to, to try out these tools, give them a solid effort and really see what happens. And if you try them, you give it a solid try and one of these things just isn't for you, that's fine. Cut, cut bait and move on. We, we're going to assume that not everything in this program is going to be effective for everyone. Yes. But we do think from our experience and in, in most cases from solid empirical research that others have done, that at least most of these techniques will be helpful for most people. So we're, we're hoping you'll give them all a solid shot and practice them cumulatively. You know, some of them, as Ravi said, you'll want to practice for a day or two or three or four. Um, but some of these, because they're so easy, because they're so quick to do, uh, you're going to be able to build up a practice sort of in a cumulative way. So on day one, you may do, you know, the day one exercises on may day two, you may do day one and day two. It's going to depend on the amount of time you have uh, on, on the kinds of exercises that feel like they immediately have some payoff for you. But again, just remember, if you don't have any immediate payoff from any one of these exercises, we do hope you'll give it a try over time because some of these things really do take practice. You know, I mentioned earlier, there's some uh, modules where we touch, you know, fairly lightly on things that are very, very deep subjects. Uh, meditation comes to mind, mindfulness comes to mind. Uh, you know, these are things that people quite literally have lifetime practices doing. So if it feels like it's a little difficult getting off on the right foot or you kind of get it and you kind of don't or you feel like you get it, but you don't see the immediate reward, two things I want you to do. One is I, I, I want you to really stick with it, give it a fair shot because some of these things just take, to, take some time to be effective. Number yes. two, one of the things that Ravi and I both want is feedback on what is and is not working for you. And, and there's a couple of very different reasons for that. The first one is we, if we can give you some correction, if we can give you some feedback, if we can give you some additional ideas while the course is going on, we want to do that. We don't want you drumming your fingers and waiting till day 22 or day 35 or not asking at all. We want you to be in touch with us at any point during the course to let us know if there's something that you're struggling with uh, and, and we can help you in, in some way uh, try and have an easier time with or, or have a more effective mm -hmm. experience with. The second reason is Ravi and I are both very open to developing other kinds of programs tailored towards the needs of folks that are taking this 21 day course. So as we hear the particular things you need, if there's enough of a call for it, I, I can't promise we can develop a new program for one person or two people, but if there are things that we hear consistently, uh, you know, we, we are already thinking about things we might be able to do as a follow up yeah. to this so that we can get more resources out there for all of you. There may be more advanced, deeper programs, but as Chris said, th this while this just starts on some subjects, we, we're giving you enough things that not everything will work for everybody, but pretty much everybody will find something that works for them. Yep, and you will, in these 21 days, find enough, I believe, if you do the practice that, that is just minutes, to be able to start to shift the serenity in your life. And, and what Chris was mentioning in terms of wanting feedback, I'll just share with you uh, here. For example, this is in module one where we just uh, invite you to introduce yourselves at the bottom of the training. Each module has a comments section where you can, you can, um, you can uh, share what, what you're, you know, what your thoughts are, what's working, the successes, the challenges, all of that. So both we can help you maybe or, or step in or some of the other participants so that we've got that community moving forward. And I'm curious now, Margaret had said as well, I'd shown it a little earlier, the, the string exercise is amazing. Is that about moving the, the self chatter, Margaret? And, um, the other thing too I wanted to mention, like for example, for meditation, you may have tried meditation and said, this isn't for me, I can't sit. Like the, the, the perfect example I think of meditation when someone's starting is from the movie Eat, Pray, Love when Julie Roberts is in India and she's told to go sit and meditate for an hour. So she goes and sits 
and she, her, you know, it's got her internal dialogue. She's going, blah, 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 right? And then after she's going, oh, it must be an hour now. And she looks over and it's not even been a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what happens for most people. But what we're going to show you the very first day, we're going to show you literally how you can turn off that head chatter. And at, at, at a whim. So imagine that going into meditation and being able to silence it immediately, going into your yoga class, going or online yoga class these days, um, going, you know, going for a walk and just in, without that intro blah, going at you. So there's, there's also, we, we're bringing some very unique approaches here that, that leverage these resources, these tools, so that you can be a lot more effective. Thank you. And Martin's saying, great program. Uh, congratulations. Thanks. And uh, so, yeah. This I'm, is from I'm, someone who knows a lot of programs well. So that, that that's a, a, a high compliment. It's most appreciated. Martin is my Buddhist mentor. <laughs> <laughs> he's uh he, he spent a lot of time studying spirituality he's and meditation a sage fellow. He, oh there we go it's a sage topic yes uh so I, I what i'd like to ask is if you guys have questions or if you've got if there's things about this that are exciting you can you pop those in the comments so that i so that chris and i since we're here we can answer them and also, if you're happening to watch this later when it's not live, you can drop them in as well. Just put them in the comments, and we can bring that into the conversation. Any any thoughts you have? So, um, again, well, I have a question for you, Ravi. Uh oh. Which is for, for those of us like me that are techno nincompoops, poops. Uh, if someone wanted to watch this video later, has a friend who might be interested in getting more information before they start the course, where where will they be able to find the recording of uh, this session? Well, it is actually being live streamed right now to right. my personal Facebook page and to my Ravi Tangri Souljaneer Facebook page, the Facebook okay. page. The, and Chris has shared it onto his personal page. Plus, we're going to download it and we're going to upload it into our LinkedIn uh, as a post in our LinkedIn profiles. So, um, so what we're going to? I'm so glad you say we because, of course, I know have no idea how to do that, but I'm going to trust you. All well, I'll download it and I'll send you the stuff. Relax. <laughs> the, and now, what you can do with any of these is the share button. You can share it to your friend in uh, Facebook Messenger, for example. And we've got a couple people. Lindsay's already registered. Looking forward to checking it out. Thank you right. so much. Oh, Sophia has an amazing question. From Winnipeg, what causes anxiety? Let's start with you, Chris. Uh, well, anxiety has a lot of causes, uh, and one of the things that uh, we know is that there are some people who are more anxiety prone than others. Uh, there does seem to be, for some people, some genetic factor uh, that just makes your trigger, you know, a little faster, or in some cases, a lot faster. Uh, for some people, uh, anxiety really can be learned. We know a lot about that as well. Uh, and we also know that there, there are, very broadly speaking, two different but interrelated components. And I don't, don't want to get too academic about this, but there's really two sides. One has to do with the physical anxiety response. You know, the things that uh, in the extreme, we get rapid heart rate, sometimes we get sweats. Um, we sometimes get, in extreme cases, you know, chest discomfort, um, mild anxiety. We get tension in our shoulders and our neck. We get headaches, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. And that's the physical side of anxiety. Uh, the cognitive side is, for many people, actually a, a much stronger foe to battle. And that is the part of us that tends to catastrophize. It's the part of us that has racing thoughts. It's the part of us that gets the chest discomfort and thinks, oh, oh no, I'm, I'm dying. What's happening? Uh, it's the part of us that, 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 that looks in every corner, uh, literally and, and figuratively, and says, you know, there's something out there that's going to be dangerous. I need to look. We're sort of on hyper alert right. all the time. And, and our state of arousal is very high. And that, uh, that cognitive anxiety tends to feed on itself. So we get anxious, 
our body responds, we feel our body respond, our mind says, oh, there's some sort of danger, uh, and it just sort of spins out of control. Now, the degree of that is extreme, right? There's some people that have very mild kinds of anxiety. It's situational. It's there for 30 seconds or two minutes and it goes away. Uh, there are other people that have these very high states of arousal for extended periods of time. Right. Um, the good thing, and here again, I'm repeating myself from earlier, is the kinds of techniques that we're talking about in this program will be helpful for each of those kinds of anxieties. You know, for, for people that are dealing with, for instance, repetitive thinking, like, you know, mild OCD, that this is not, none of this is going to be a cure for OCD, but some of this will be tools and techniques you can use to you know, quiet some of those repetitive thoughts that fuels the anxiety, that fuels the repetitive thoughts, helps to break that cycle that uh, may or may not start the anxiety, but maintains the anxiety. Uh, See there why are some I get kinds of anxiety that are strictly physical, you know, classic um, panic attacks, for example. Um, those, those certainly uh, are, are nothing that, that are self-inflicted. If you've had one, you know they're terrifying, they're horrifying, they're extremely frightening, but they kind of come out of nowhere and they go away just as easily. Here again, the kinds of techniques we're talking about, they're, they're not going to be a cure for them, but if you have panic attacks, the techniques, some of the techniques we're talking about are very likely to reduce the, reduce the severity of them. So that was a fairly long-winded answer to a straightforward <laughs> question. Uh, That's why I, I asked the there. psychologist. I, I got to uh, what you were looking for yeah. uh, in, in where anxiety comes from. If, if I went the wrong direction or a different multiple set of directions, uh, let me know and I'll try and narrow down the answer for you. Well, I think you also touched on, she had a follow-up question of our anxiety and fear, the same thing. And you touched a little bit that the, the, the fear response that comes out of that right and yeah it can be fear of the, of the same thing it can if i understand the question correctly it can be a range of things you know if you're talking about phobias to a specific thing you know those are, are usually very limited to one thing uh, people have multiple phobias as well uh, and again you know like so much in life uh there, there is a uh, probably a genetic component there's an experiential component uh, you know, when you think about anxiety disorders like PTSD, right, there's an anxiety disorder and is related to trauma that, that triggers something in our brains, something in our bodies. So we, we sort of can't unthink, we can't un unexperience that trauma. So it comes back to us repetitively. And there yeah. again, there's both a physical and a cognitive component to that. And I mean, the, the, the challenge with this, the, the fight or flight response awesome when we lived in the caves and the saber-toothed tiger came at us right you either run or you hide or you or you freeze right that that was um but there's no saber-toothed tiger so if we're continually triggering that what it does is it it pumps all sorts of toxins th through the body i believe it's like 13 1400 chemical changes 30 hormonal changes and when you're living that all day long it is not healthy these things break down the immune system. These things uh, age us. You know, some of the, so the, the some of the chemicals that you can identify. That that that. So it, it's how can we break that cycle? So we're and and that I think that it's the lower level stresses sometimes that can be even more damaging if they're going on. And on and well, on. they can be partly because, the, you know, their cumulative effect and partly because lower level anxiety often are the kinds of things that we, we try successfully or not to ignore. Uh, and, and just like uh, some kinds of depression, you know, if we're a little anxious, what do people tell us? Oh, don't be anxious or don't worry about that. Well, you know, you, you, you can't not worry about something that you're worrying about just by psychically willing it away. Now, we're going to talk about some ways in this course where you can stop some of those thoughts. You can suppress some of the anxiety that comes with them. Um, but the idea of just telling someone, just relax, uh, is not going to relax them. You know, one of the things that... that uh, no, it makes you want to punch them. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even person. if you're not already feeling stressed, right? Yeah. Um, one of the things that we talk about in one of the modules uh, is you know, one of the odd things about uh, relaxation uh, is you cannot make yourself relax, which is a little bit of an awkward paradox that maybe sounds a little zenish. But if you're just kind of gritting your teeth trying to make yourself relax, uh, obviously, what are you doing? You're working. You're, you're not. It's it's anti-relaxing. So all you yeah. can really do 
is allow yourself to relax. Uh, yeah. and, and that may, for some people, be easier said than done. Uh, yeah. But uh, it, it's a mindset that we're going to encourage you to have, to allow yourself to be more comfortable in your skin, to allow yourself yeah. to be more comfortable in your life. Uh, and, and even though that may sound pretty corny to some of you, and it may sound tough to put into practice for some of you, uh, the reality is that mindset in and of, in and of itself is huge in building uh, practices that uh, create and maintain serenity. Yeah. So once again, this uh, Nancy's asking uh, br the briefly the what, the when, and the how of this. This is a free program for you that Chris and I have built over the last while well, that uh, is called 21 Days to Serenity. And what this is about is it's you go to the website that it was whoops disappeared there get rid of the stress.com sign up and you get access to it and what you will get is every day you will get one new uh module in the program each module is bite-sized takes a few minutes to watch the video and to practice it's just a matter of minutes a day uh but and, and the you, win is right now it's, it's online so yes it is time. available now so, uh, and the other thing we'd like to ask you, because this is free, we want to get it out there just because it's there's so many people that are having this pervasive low level anxiety. As we said earlier, this is not clinical. This is not to deal with trauma with massive grief. This is not to deal with depression or, you know, the high acute, acute anxiety. You need professional support for that. This is for the majority of people who are, dealing with this perpetual low-level anxiety that's going on with the uncertainty that's going on here um <laughs> is holding you now margaret saying is holding your breath and not breathing properly anxiety i catch myself doing this as well um, well, it, it can be, and if you're conscious of it and it's making you uncomfortable, it's certainly creating anxiety. So, so either way, it, it, it's something to monitor. There, there are lots of people that, that do that uh, for whatever combination of reasons. It isn't necessarily uh, an anxiety response. Uh, but if you notice that it happens at times that you're anxious or conversely, if doing it makes you anxious, uh, then it's something that you want to pay more attention to. But I wouldn't be yeah. concerned about it in and of itself. Although I highly recommend breathing. Yeah. It's a good thing. Eventually. You know, that, you know, one, <laughs> yeah. one nice thing uh, about the way humans are wired uh, is you can't not breathe. You know, you can try and hold your breath. And some people can hold their breath a very long time. But eventually, you know, uh, our, our, have our automatic systems kick in and we breathe again. So there, there's no danger to sometimes holding your breath a bit. But again, pay attention. Is it related to times that you feel anxious? Is it related yeah. to anxious thoughts? Um, in that case, then, then that's uh, maybe something you want to pay attention to simply as sort of a, a trigger sign, something that tells you you need to be paying attention to other things going on in the moment that uh, might be creating some anxiety for you. Yeah. And I think Martin, our, our Austrian guru, uh, was uh, speaking to what your, to, you know, your explanation earlier. He was saying epigenetics show this beautifully about um, in terms of work dealing with the the the, the stressors and such so so you know again if you've got any questions type them in now what we'd like to ask you as i say is please as there's a question that came up earlier how do we get the word out honestly this is word of mouth so if you want to if 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 you do know people that that you like you can share this uh broadcast people you don't like <laughs> <laughs> or you just want them to be stressed, yes. No. Uh, uh, you can share it or on, on your page or in Messenger. Um, we'd appreciate that because it, this it's out there as a resource. Please uh, help us get, get it out so people can access it. Um, and we'd appreciate that. And please keep letting us know in the, as we said, in the program itself, you there are comment sections where we can carry on conversations on each module. You can share your successes, your challenges, all of your questions, all of that there. Absolutely. And, you know, and, and these are modules that, that Ravi and I can tweak too. If there are things that, that turn out to not be clear, if there are things that you feel somehow send you in, in the wrong direction, I mean, anything like that, the more feedback you can give us, uh, the, the more we can not only 
help you deal with whatever barriers you might be finding to uh, putting these modules to use. But there may be things we need to rethink in terms of how we've worded them, additional information we need to put out to help other people taking the course have an easier time. So truly, any feedback, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs sideways uh, is helpful to us, uh, uh, number one, in helping you, but also to making this course better for others to take in the future. Yeah. So I think we're uh, not seeing, oh, oh, hang on. So Nancy's asking, does everyone who registered participate at the same time or is it on your own schedule? It is going to be based on when you register. So there will be, today is the launch day, which we had planned for some time. Um, in the next few days, there will be a number of people starting, but you, if you register today, you will get day one today. You'll get day two tomorrow. If someone registers tomorrow, they will get day one tomorrow. Yeah. But once you've done it, you, you'll you be able to go back and look at comments that pop up in earlier uh, modules as well. Yeah, you're, so, you're not booted out at the end of 21 days. Um, when, no. when you register, the modules and the supporting materials will will be there online where our plan is to keep this website up indefinitely. Uh, and so uh, again, I hope so. It's on my website. Days and you're done. Uh, number one, uh, you can go back. Number two, we really do hope that there will be a community built around this program and that will be open to anyone who's taken the program. And that, and that again, should be ongoing as, as well. Um, so uh, hope, yeah. hope that answers the question for you. It does, it seems. And uh, and uh, Sophia says, sounds wonderful. Thank you. Thank okay. you, thank you Sophia, for, for tuning in. So thank you all for tuning in. We hope to see you in the uh, in the 21 Days to Serenity program. Uh, please feel free to share. We do want to get this out there. Um, we, you know, we have built it, so let people use it. Uh, and uh, and and please do be part of the community and share with us there. And if you can share this and pass it forward, we'd appreciate that. Uh, it will help us get the word out. And build the community, right? Which is helpful yep. to all of us. Yep. Thank you all. And thank you, Chris. This has been a wonderful creative journey. And we'll see you in the course. Bye.